Oh, so overall, we want to talk about the subject of foster parenting, but more so um, why we have children in our society that will need to be taken care of uh, within the family and the community setting and what alternatives there are. And then we all do know the foremost department that tends to take care of some of these is the uh, social welfare department. I have um, its director right here and um, Daniel Nona is the director, the national director for the Department of Social Warfare. And then we'll also be joined by uh, Samuel Sanaglati, who also um, works relatedly on the subject that we have to talk about. And um, we will have him on stream when we do. But um, Mr. Nona is joining me. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, good morning. And, and uh, thank you for joining me. Now, uh, generally, do we have incrementals in terms of uh, a number of orphanages that have uh, a number of children uh, who are there as inmates? Yeah, the, actually we do not have incremental now. In, uh, before the care reform initiative, there used to be the issue of uh, uh, people opening up orphanages <laughs> just as they want to do business as if it was a, was a business venture. But as time went on, after the care reform initiative, we have tried to prevent that kind of thing. So that increment mm. is no more there. It's rather reduced. Mm. You talk about the care reform initiative. So uh, when you saw that the numbers were increasing, or they were there without the proper laid down permission, so to speak, or the right to be there, then you decided to do this to counter it. Of course. How, how, so what, what did you do exactly? So what we decided to do is to conduct a survey. So around 2007, we realized that the orphanages were many. So we decided to make sure that at least the, the negative impact was so great on these children. So we decided to look at the numbers. The data we collected wasn't good enough. We realized that people opened these orphanages just to make a business, as I was saying. So when we realized it, the negative impact on the children too, it was so great. Because you can find a child where the children in the orphanages, you realize that they were having problems with attachments. You know, the, 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 the care that was given to them wasn't something that was good enough. So you had a lot of challenges where caregivers were so few and the children were so many because they harvested so many children into the orphanages. So you could have one a caregiver, for example, taking care of about 15 uh, children. And that one, of course, nobody can do that. I mean, take care of children of that number. So it was necessary for us to tone down the numbers. So that is what brought about the Care Reform Initiative, because there were negative impacts on the children, relational problems, and they have to also, I mean, uh, when they even leave the orphanage difficult to reintegrate them into society. Mm. But there are, there are key questions about how um, children find themselves on the streets or orphaned. Have we been able to find that, uh, that out? Yeah, most of the time, I mean, uh, for example, the orphanages, it was through poverty. People just took advantage of the fact that people were poor, and then they decided to go to them, oh, you give me my, your child for me to take care of. And then, you know, on the street also, it is also about the uh, poverty most of the times that children find themselves there because they, 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 they want to survive. So mostly poverty is what is driving this. So it means that ideally children should be growing in, in, in communities and a family yeah, setting. Yeah, it's important for the child to grow in the family because that is where the child is to be nurtured. You know, that is where the stimulating, I mean, you have the stimulating environment for the child to be able to grow well. So in the family, we have children who, most of the time, when you compare these children to other children I mean, in normal homes, you realize that they have lower IQ. You know, they are not socially, uh, uh, they have not been uh, socialized properly. You know, their physical development, everything is retarded. So we need to work on these things to ensure that children grow well in the Family. And you know, the family will by all means transform into the larger community where uh, we have a peaceful, I mean, a, a harmonious society where everybody will live 
in peace. Well, when I was reviewing literature on the subject, I came across what they call institutionalization. Yeah. What exactly is it? Well, it's about, uh, as I was saying, people carrying children into harvesting, usually we call them harvesting, people carrying children into the institutions, residential homes where they want to take care of them. So it's like they put them there and try to work with them and uh, help them, but that help is not sufficient for the child. Is it that the help is not coming or that the help is not sufficient? The help is, uh, you know, the help might become, maybe they think that the child needs food to eat because that is poverty, but you know, we have to handle children in such a way that they know they have a caring person. But here there are this kind of group treatment. People just see them as children who need help. And then the love is not there. Mm. So that is the whole issue about the institution. Um, some years ago, and this one too, I came across it the whole of yesterday when I was reviewing literature. Uh, for example, we have a Hollywood star, Angelina Jolie, who wanted to or had adopted a child in, in Malawi, uh, but had come under some uh, difficulties with the processes of adoption. Uh, but we also do know that we have a lot of destitute children who would fare better in families that want them. So then my mind came to this question. When we say the, the, the adoption and the processes thereof, and then the foster home and the care itself, what are the differences? You know, the foster uh, home is, a, is just a temporary care place. It is for a period, maybe six months or less, or up to one year or more, depending on the child situation. So that one is temporary, where the child can go back to the family. We can work on the family for the child to go back to, to his or her family. On the adoption, when you adopt a child, it means that the child is for the person who has adopted I mean, the child. It's like a biological child to you. You have to take care and do everything for the child to ensure. Even inheritance, the child is part of that family. So that one is a permanent solution to uh, a child being... Is it easier they, to they, adopt in Ghana? It's easy. It's easy to adopt. The only thing is for you to, if you bring your application and the child is found, they are going to match you with the child and then place you the child with you. Is this something that your department also handles? Yeah, we handle that. Mm. Uh, and uh, if somebody, let's say, from outside Ghana wants to come and adopt, uh, what is the, do we have a particular process that you're familiar you want to take us through or you want us to defer that? No, uh, for the international adoptions, you know, they, they have to apply. They also have to, they have the adoption agencies there. And then we also have our adoption authority here. So what usually happens is for them to work on the person who wants to adopt. They'll look at their home conditions and all that. Then we are here with the child. We are going to look at the conditions of the child and whether it is actually uh, something that uh, we can allow for adoption. But the whole issue is that we don't, inter-country adoptions is only done when we cannot find anybody in the country here. Mm. At the end of the day, uh, we do know that there are some negatives for institutionalization. We're talking about putting people in homes, et cetera. Um, what would that be? Yeah, the negative impact is actually, as I was uh, trying to explain, it's very great in the, when you send a child to the orphanage. You know, even the perception of the orphanages, I mean, it's not good. Somebody is in the orphanage and it's like, oh, these are children, fatherless, somebody say fatherless, motherless, you know, the kind of words they use against them. So it's difficult for them to even get back into the community. And as I'm saying, when they are there, they are not treated like a child who is in the home. So the, the, that problem of attachment is there. Emotionally, they can't develop well. Physically, you know, socially, there are so many challenges there. And as I'm saying, they treat them as if, I mean, uh, they, 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 they need uh, they, that help. It is not a right. So most of the times, you realize that the child cannot develop as he should. So Does it mean that um, we want to encourage more children going to families than, than going to orphanages? Of course, we just want, what we are educating the public is that we want the children in families. We have, if the child has a family, that is the best place for the child. Uh, if the child hasn't got that 
uh, chance, we have to look for foster care where the child will be there for, I mean, temporarily. Or we can also look for kinship care where somebody who is related to the child somehow should be taking care of the child. And we have to work with them to ensure that the child is properly taken care of. And we also have the last option, which is the adoption. So when that happens, it means the child belongs to that particular family permanently. Mm. Well, we'll see how that goes. But we've also been joined by somebody who's also an expert, also works closely on this subject. And, and Samuel Sanaglati, uh, I would say that it's a, it's, a, it's a foster care expert, but also works closely with all the related matters that we're talking about. He is head of foster care services unit. And thank you for joining me, uh, Mr. Sanaglati. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good morning. No, 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 no great. The, 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 the subject of foster care, uh, is it a delicate issue or is it a cumbersome uh, process to put somebody in a foster care? It is a very, very easy and a simple process to become a foster parent, um, such that our culture even allows us to already foster. I'm sure, Roland, when you were growing up, you may have lived with one of your uncles or aunties at some point. And that is all we are talking about. But we also acknowledge the fact that there are some children who do not have the privilege of um, living with an uncle or an auntie sometime or someday. So um, we want to take advantage of that culture that is inherent in us to train Ghanaians so they can um, take care of such children. So Roland, you are welcome to become a foster parent if you want to. Mm. But if I want to adopt, what happens? Let's say I've, I've temporarily been attached to this child, but I want to have that child as mine. Uh, how do we do the seamless transition? <laughs> that is dependent on, on a number of factors. It is not all the children that you see on the street or the orphanage or a child, children that's um, come into the alternative care system who are adoptable, who are children who do not have families or parents who still want them. Some of the children come into the alternative care because parents um, are either very sick, parents abuse them, poverty level the children back if the condition gets better. So it will not be fair on the part of the child and on the part of these parents give such a child out to anybody at all for um, adoption. However, if after investigation it is detected that such children do not have anywhere to go, we want every child to grow up in a family. We want every child to have somebody they can call a mother or a father. We want every child to be able to point at a certain community and say, that is my hometown. Mm. In that case, we then recommend that whoever has bonded well with the child, has taken care of the child to that point where we realize there is no family that could be traced to adopt the child so that that continues. Mm. Now, um, this project that you talk so about. Mm. It okay. is easy that you adopt the child, you be able to adopt the child after you have cared for the child. Mm. Now, uh, this project that you have, the family based care project, it's supposed to be a solution to all this. Mm. Ultimately, what do we want to achieve with this? Yeah, the, we, what we are trying to educate the public about is to tell them that the best place for the child is to live in the family. That's the best place to promote that, for people to understand that the best place is for the child to grow in the family. Then we are also promoting the uh, deinstitutionalization. We don't want children in the homes, so we are closing down those homes. And we are trying to also promote the fact that we want the, I mean, to have other alternative forms of care, which is the adoption, kinship care, and then we have the foster care. So we are also looking at the fact that we, the, 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 uh, the objective, I mean, what we also want to achieve is that we don't want the children, when we take them from the uh, orphanage, we don't want them to be readmitted. We want to make sure that the child is permanently placed. We don't want them to be readmitted. And we want to encourage, I mean, the, the fact that we don't want uh, 
I mean, uh, people to be placing children, that should be the last resort in institutions. And it's only the social welfare department that is supposed to be placing children in the such homes. So people should take note of this, that those who are operating the, uh, the orphanages should not be placing children in the home just like that. Uh, Mr. Sanaglate, so how do we resolve this? How do we make sure that everybody comes on board? That um, once we're saying it's not every child that is destitute, at least then we know that we can reintegrate them or encourage the families to take them back. Now, two, we have some who really have nobody to care for them. How do we identify them, encourage sections of the public or households or the community to say that we want to take these children in, uh, 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 adopt them, or, or, or take them in as families? It is adoption. I, I, I was listening to you earlier when you, you and your panelists were saying that um, adoption is um, a very complicated thing and it is as if we don't want anybody to adopt. That is very, very, very false. We, we, the processes are quite stringent because we don't want a situation when, where the wrong child will be placed with family because, they, because of the interest of that child. Assuming a child is placed with a family wrongfully and then later the parents are identified, what do you think we might have done to the child? Okay, so we just want the processes to be followed as as it should. And then we have also made some, um, some checks, which makes it a bit very difficult for people to be able to um, outwit the system. So if, if you apply and it becomes difficult for you to adopt, it is because there are certain things that you are not doing right. Adoption as it stands, it's in the best interest of the child. So if you are considering the best interest of the child, we want the, the best for the child. Um, we, we will always try as much as possible to think about the child first and not the, um, um, sorry, the applicant or the adoptive parent. If it's easy for the child to go and we think the child has no family, we do that. We also encourage um, Kenyans and every one meaning citizen of this country to come forward and then try as much as possible to help these children. If you don't have foster parents signing on, we will not be able to um, have success with this alternative care system we are talking about. We will pref we prefer to have children placed in the family rather than them being taken to residential homes for children. So um, one other way we can get this thing done better is um, like you are doing, giving us the opportunity to talk to the general public, and we encourage such more of such things to happen, so that a lot more people will get to know of this and then apply to become parents to such children. Mm. Let me again clarify: if I have a child in my care with my family, uh, I be, I born with a child, but that child is not mine. Let's say, but if I get to identify that child doesn't have anybody to look after him or her, how do I make sure that that child becomes mine? Well, the issue is about, uh, I don't know, uh, if it's about kinship, where the child, you know, normally in Ghanaian society, where the parents are not there and somebody is willing to take care of the child. That one, there's no problem. Most of the time, people have informal You're talking kinship. about within the family setting, the yes. same family? It, yes. That's kinship? Yes. Okay. But if it's about uh, you have found a child somewhere, you don't just have to keep the child because the children are for what? Government. So anytime you find a child, you have to send the child to what? Department of Social Welfare. Where if perhaps you want to foster the child, but the child has to be matched with you. You know, if the child is matched with you and then we realize that you, the child can be there, then the child will be given to you to foster. But if it is, also, it also reaches a point where you realize that well, this child, the family cannot be found, or the family has relinquished the child. We don't want the child anymore. Maybe the child will be given up for adoption, but it doesn't necessarily mean that because you are keeping the child, the child will be given to you. So, I mean, bonding with the child, that's what we are saying. As a foster parent, when you even bond with the child, what happens is that you have to be ready to also give up the child. It's not about the fact that I'm fostering a child, and because of that, I want to adopt the child. Mm. Mr. Sanaglate, I'll give you the last word before I come to, um, uh, and this is just for a minute. So, um, as we encourage more foster care parents, how then do we solve the next step where people bond with them emotionally? Uh, 
Well, it's present. How, how do we resolve that? I have bonded with a child. A child is not mine. If it's the kinship, that's another matter. That's a relative or a community person. Yeah. So what, what do I do? You are bonded, if you are bonded with a child, that's what I'm saying. In the best interest of the child, we have to be looking at what is going on with you and that child. Understand? So that if it, you are bonded well, and then we check the background of the child, that's what I'm saying. If we realize that the child is adoptable, then you can decide to what? Adopt the child. But if the child is like placed in your foster care, placed in your care for you to take care of, it doesn't mean that when they place the child there and you're bonded with the child, by all means you have to. I mean, by what time do we want to uh, have as uh, limited number of inst institutions as possible? I mean, the orphanages and, and some of the care homes. Well, we have been uh, uh, trying to close down some of those institutions which are not meeting the national standards. And then not all of them can go anyway. But what we are doing is that we are reducing it. There is a five year plan which we are I mean, hoping to reduce the orphanages maybe up to 50 in the whole country. Presently, there are more than 100. So we are ensuring that children who go to those places enter into institutions, they are sent back to a family or their families or into foster care, kinship care, or adoption. So we are reducing the numbers instead. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for passing through the studio. Um, grateful. We, again, we'll have to call on you because this is a bigger one as well. And this is all new to us as Africans, right? But. Uh, we've had in the studio the director of the Department of Social Welfare, and it's under the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection. And, and uh, Mr. Daniel uh, Nona uh, has been my guest right here, but also on stream is Samuel Sanaglate. He is uh, the boss of the unit, foster care. And um, we have been doing a lot of discussions on. We'll try and do more to make sure all of us are in tune with what we need to do when we find the children and we're interested. But it's where we have to take a break. When we come back, we'll tell you what is going down about time. We're talking the Commonwealth um, Initiative. And the Commonwealth Expertise and Investment Council has already started uh, the CHIME program. And uh, We'll be having John Apia, who is the boss uh, of the institution right here, the head of Mission Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council, to help us understand where we're going with the next phase. Stay on. We'll be right back.